fossil fuels for kids. By now, many of you might have heard of something called fossil fuels, more commonly known as coal, oil, and natural gas. The sources of energy that make our cars drive, heat and cool our houses, help us cook our food, and run all the machines that do various things in our cities and towns. Most of the energy you use in your house to charge your phones and iPads, watch TV, and run the electronics that you love to play with comes from fossil fuels. But did you know that as weird as it sounds, fossil fuels actually do come from fossils that have been buried in the earth for millions of years? You may have heard someone joke that the dinosaurs that once roamed the earth can now be put in your car's gas tank. It's kind of true. The plants and animals that lived a long time ago have over the years decayed and been stored deep in the ground in the form of oil, coal, and gas. So, a fossil fuel is pretty much what it sounds like. Fuel that comes from fossils. So, just how did the fossils that are left behind for millions of years of life turn into fuel? Well, about 300 million years ago, the earth was covered with dense plants and animals. It was pretty much wall-to-wall -wall trees and foliage. Of course, this was way before we started cutting down trees and using them for our purposes, like burning them, building stuff with them, and eating them for food. These plants that once dominated the landscape had all kinds of energy stored up in them from when they went through photosynthesis, which means they took energy from the sun in order to grow and thrive. You can kind of think all of those plants and animals as energy-storing organisms. So, when these organisms died and decayed, they took with them lots of energy that was stored in their leaves and stems and other parts of their living bodies. And over the years, they eventually got buried under layers of rock, soil, and dirt. And all that pressure from the earth on top of those organic remains turned them into fossil fuels. Fossils because they were old, hardened remains of living things, and fuels because they still had all that energy stored inside of them. So now that we know how Mother Nature created fossil fuels, let's talk about the three main varieties, coal, oil, and natural gas. When you think about coal, it might conjure up images of the lump Santa puts in your Christmas stocking if you haven't been good that year. You have to wonder how Santa can carry that heavy coal along with all those gifts. But that's a topic for another video. Coal is actually the most common fossil fuel in the United States, and it generates almost a third of the energy we use. Coal is pretty much what it looks like, a brownish, blackish rock that can be burned for energy. It's made up of organic matter that has become carbonized or transformed into carbon over millions of years. Not surprisingly, the word coal itself is from an old English word meaning burning ember. Coal has been used for a long time to make energy, longer than any other fossil fuel. For years, we've used coal to power steam engines, create energy at power plants, and even to make plastic tar, and fertilizers. Coal itself comes in a variety of forms and is classified based on the amount of carbon in it and how much heat it can generate. The four main kinds in order of how much carbon they have in them are anthracite, bituminous, subbituminous, and lignite. Anthracite coal has the highest heating value and is pretty rare making up only 1% of the coal mined in the U.S. The most common of those forms of coal is bituminous, which is 100 to 300 million years old. It's mined mainly in the states of West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, Illinois, and Indiana, and is mostly used to create energy and make iron and steel. It's also the kind most preferred by Santa. Side note. We cannot confirm the last fact. Subbituminous coal is the second most common type and is about a hundred million years old. Most subbituminous coal is mined in Wyoming, 
Lignite coal has the lowest heating value and is also the newest. It's kind of crumbly and can be used for energy, though some gets converted to natural gas. Coal has been used for many purposes for hundreds of years. But recently, people have been trying to move away from coal as a main source of energy. Because it's dirty, pollutes the air and water, and mining it from the earth can be dangerous work, leading to injury and health problems. Some of the ways in which it's mined are also very harmful to the earth. In strip mining, the tops of mountains are exploded away, which can severely scar the landscape. Coal is also a non-renewable source of energy, which means it takes millions of years to replace every piece of coal that's used. The next type of fossil fuel is also very common, and that's oil. Oil that comes from the earth is often called crude oil, meaning that it hasn't been refined or processed. Oil is a thick liquid that is also derived from plants and animals that lived millions of years ago. If you've ever touched oil, you know that it's very hard to wash off, leaving your hands feeling, well, oily. Most oil deposits were formed near the bottom of the ocean millions of years ago. Some of these oceans, or bodies of water, don't exist anymore, but the oil still remains, as is the case in the Middle East and North Africa, where there is a lot of oil. There was once a large body of water called the Tethys Ocean that covered that part of the world. The ocean is now gone, and the area is currently largely desert, but the oil remains. As we said, when oil is first extracted from the earth, it's called crude, meaning it can't really be used for anything. So the oil that's taken from the earth is sent to giant refineries, where it is made into lots of different petroleum products, like gas for cars, heating oil, diesel and jet fuel, wax, asphalt, and lots of other stuff that we see around us. It's even made into crayons! So the next time you pull out your box of Crayolas, think about this. You're coloring with dead plants and animals. Gasoline is the most common use for oil these days. But when it was first used for fuel in the mid-1800s, oil was made into kerosene that was used to light up lamps. Until then, people had been mainly using whale oil, which, as you can imagine, is a lot harder to come by. And so kerosene was a cheaper way to light your home. <laughs> it was much better from the whale's perspective, too. These days, Russia, Saudi Arabia, and the United States are the three biggest suppliers of oil. And China, the U.S., and Japan are the countries that consume the most. The U.S. uses most of its oil to fuel cars, trucks, and other modes of transportation. Just like coal, oil is a non-renewable fossil fuel and causes a whole host of problems for the environment, such as letting off greenhouse gases that cause climate change and contribute to acid rain. Plus, the pollution from gasoline that is burned by vehicles is known to lead to diseases such as cancer and asthma. The third type of fossil fuel is known as natural gas, which is made up of methane and other hydrocarbons. Natural gas is also the result of plant and animal decay and can be found in the same place as coal and oil, under the ground, in the cracks, and spaces between rocks. Natural gas is called natural because unlike oil, it doesn't need to be refined to be used as fuel. It's cleaner burning than other fossil fuels, but it does still contribute to greenhouse gases, and therefore global warming. When it does escape into the air through a leak, Scientists feel it's safer to burn it off rather than let the methane enter the environment. The first widespread use of natural gas was for street lamps in the 1800s. In 1885, a chemist named Robert Bunsen created a burner which used natural gas mixed with air to produce a steady flame that could be used to cook food and heat liquids. Widespread natural gas use really took off in the United States in the 1900s when pipelines were built to transport it around the country. Unlike gasoline, which is made from crude oil, natural gas has no odor and no color, which is why people who distribute it commonly add a uniquely scented chemical called mercaptan to it, so it actually has a smell. Otherwise, there'd be no way of knowing if you had a natural gas leak, which can be really dangerous. If you don't know there's a leak, you could have an explosion. 
you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who actually loves the smell of mercaptan. Just like oil, natural gas is mined from the earth by drilling, a process that releases the gas which can then flow up through the pipes into the underground tanks. When it's chilled, natural gas actually turns into a liquid, which can be transported by truck. Natural gas is mostly used for heat, to generate electricity, and for cooking. Some vehicles do run on natural gas, but it's a very small fraction of the cars and trucks on the road. One of the main problems with natural gas is that the way in which it's often discovered, drilled, and mined. The process is called hydraulic fracturing, or fracking for short. It's a cool sounding word with not so cool impacts on the earth. The process of fracking uses a lot of water, can negatively affect vegetation and the landscape, often pollutes the groundwater, and can even cause small earthquakes. Some states are moving to ban fracking because it's so detrimental to the environment. The United States is the world's foremost user of natural gas, followed by Russia, the European Union, and China. Now, you know more about fossil fuels than you ever thought you would. Aren't they a gas? All told, the three forms of fossil fuels, coal, oil, and natural gas, make up 78% of our country's production of energy. The remaining percentage comes mostly from solar and nuclear power. There's also geothermal power, wind power, and hydropower. While fossil fuels are obviously vital to our nation's energy needs, they do have their environment problems, and people are always trying to innovate to find renewable and cleaner forms of energy that exist all around us. So now that you're an expert on fossil fuels, you'll never think about dead plants and animals the same way again. Hope you had fun learning with us. Visit us at learnbright.org for thousands of free resources and turnkey solutions for teachers and homeschoolers.